Hi everyone, it's Nancy Sheeds and welcome back to my channel. Recently, Colorado Craft Company released new images from Anita Jaram and I can't resist coloring cute animals. So of course, here we are. Today I'm coloring one of the images from the new Stargazer stamp set. The image itself is pretty easy to color, but I wanted to show you how to create the night sky, which is a combination of Copic coloring and stenciling with distress inks. Here are the Copic markers that I'll be using, but as always, you can substitute with markers you have in your stash. I have links for all the products that I'm using in the description below. I do use affiliate links, which means that I'll get a small commission at no cost to you if you make a purchase using one of my links. And for full disclosure, I received this stamp set from Colorado Craft Company because I created cards for them for this new release. Check out the link in my blog in the description below for more information. And while you're there, please click on the like and subscribe buttons to help my channel grow. So let's get started. For the background, I used the medium-sized mask from the Tim Holtz Moon Mask stencil. I held it in place with repositionable tape and then used my B02 Copic marker to trace the outline. From there, I started coloring in the night sky, working from light to dark, and using tip-to-tip -tip blending to help the transitions between colors. As you can tell, this video has been sped up for the sake of keeping it to a reasonable length. I really don't color this fast, although sometimes I wish I could. Here's where I use tip to tip blending to help the transition between the two colors. I picked up some of the darker color onto the tip of the lighter marker. This creates a color that's a combination of the two. This doesn't hurt your marker and you can wipe off any remaining color on a sheet of paper to clean off the nib. Here I'm adding B69 over the BV29 to make the darkest area a little bluer and to help the transition between the two colors. I want that outer edge to be dark, but also to be an extension of the blue combination. I'm going over this edge one more time to clean it up, and I'll also use the Zero Colorless Blender marker to clean up any stray flicks of color. Now here is where I got into trouble. I didn't check my YG markers before I started to see if they needed to be refilled. I use this combination a lot and chances were very good that they needed a little maintenance. As you'll see, my YG03 marker was dry and streaky. I really struggled to put down any ink. The YG17 and YG67 markers weren't any better. 
So I paused the video, refilled all three markers, and you'll see in a moment that it made a really big difference. I use a jewelry scale to weigh my markers so that I can tell not only if they need to be filled, but how much ink to add. A Copic sketch marker with both caps removed should weigh about 9.5 grams. I remove both caps and slowly drip the refill ink on the chisel end of the marker. There's no need to remove the nib. Give the marker a few minutes to redistribute the ink within, replace the caps, and you're good to go. That YGO3 marker was so dry that I couldn't even force it to blend using tip-to-tip -tip blending. Clearly, I needed to stop and refill the marker. So here we are after refilling all three markers. The ink is flowing, but I'm going to have to work a bit to smooth out the streaks from the dry markers. This would have been so much easier if I had checked the markers before I started. Now, those colors are too bright for nighttime, so I'm going to dull them down a bit with a layer of BV25, then BV23, and BV20. Finally, it's time to color the bunnies. I started with W1 to map out where the darkest areas are going to be. I do this with the lightest color so that if I make any mistakes, it'll get covered with subsequent layers of markers. Once I've mapped out the darkest areas, I'll start blending from dark to light. I'll work through the markers a second time and make any adjustments as necessary. Now that the coloring is done, I still have to finish the moon. I positioned the second part of the moon mask and added a little repositionable tape to the back to hold it in place. I used Distress Ink in Antique Linen to stencil the design. And then I added a little Distress Ink in Old Paper to add some dimension. I removed the stencil and blended a little antique linen ink over the entire moon to make it a little less stark in color. Here I forgot to remove the residue from the adhesive, but I did so off camera. Afterwards, I went around the edge of the moon with my B000 marker to help soften the edge.
I used a gold gel pen to add the stars. I got a little confused and added a star in front of the moon, so I disguised it later as a meteor. Or at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for joining me today. The supplies I used are listed and linked below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification button so you'll always know when I've posted a new paper crafting video. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.